Dear friends, today I would like to share with you all on the topic suffering. In Psalm 23:4, the words of David truly touched my heart. Though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Let me ask you a question. Are you walking through the valley of death? How many of you lament and curse God when you land up in difficulties and face suffering? I think most of us do it. But to a person of deep faith, suffering is a grace, not a curse. It is a pathway leading to strong intimacy with Jesus Christ, which ultimately turn into an abundant blessings. Suffering is a reality from which no one can escape. We face sufferings in many ways. It could be the death of our loved ones, losing a job, a financial crisis, enough failures of family disputes, health issues or facing criticism and so on. There is an endless list in most of our lives. Sometimes God permits tragedies through natural disasters like earthquake, tempests, incurable diseases to teach us lessons of patience and tolerance to draw closer to God. Roman 8.28 says, For those who love God, all things work together for good. Hence, God remains in the background unseen and work through the events of sufferings and crisis to remember him and to cling to him with faith. We are normal humans. Sometimes we inflict suffering by committing mistakes, making wrong moves by a lack of faith in God and depending too much on the strength of man instead of God. No matter what the source of our suffering, whether inflicted by our sins or the sins of others, when tarnished and toned with mental and emotional anguish, we must embrace the cross with Jesus and say with him, not my will, but thine be done. When God sends us suffering, he is not angry with us. Rather, he is giving us the privilege of sharing in his son's sufferings. God, who is the author of our life, was unjustly condemned to death, went through terrible suffering like a common criminal, nailed to cross, but even in his extreme suffering, he prayed for forgiveness, surrendered himself to his heavenly father, from Bible, we get many examples, those who underwent afflictions, oppressions and trials, but at the same time also have received deliverance and blessings through Christ when they cried unto him. Like we see in Bible, Chandrak, Meshach and Abednego was restored from fiery furnace. Daniel was saved from lion's den. David, whose entire possessions were ransacked. All associates turned against him and tried to stone against him to death. In his sore distress, he cried to the Lord and Lord's amazing peace surrounded him. Jonah's story reveals a great intervention of Lord who saved him from the belly of fish. Job, who lost everything he had in his life, he wept and agonized in the presence of God. Though the calamity was too heavy for him to uphold, but he too was blessed. Also we see Lord, who had closed Hannah's womb, she too had poured out her soul in the presence of the Lord. For long, long time, 
and she received peace. The Bible also says when Lord spoke to Moses face to face to lead Israelites away from Egypt, Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have I not found favor in your spirit that you laid all the burden on these people on me? Seeing the mental agony of Moses, he went ahead of him during the day as a pillar of cloud to lead the way and at night as the pillar of fire. Today, like Moses, we might also be heavily laden with several kinds of burden. Let us also pour out our burden and suffering in the presence of God. The Lord who assured peace to Moses remembered Hannah's grief and who gave restoration to Job will definitely redeem and restore us from all distress and agonies. His presence will go ahead of you and the Lord will command His peace upon you. Amen.